Yes, uh, so I'm Scott Manson. Um, I look after the uh, cyber security sales specialist at Cisco Systems covering the Middle East from all the way from Pakistan all the way across to uh, Turkey. Yes, yeah, so um, at JISEC we're really focused on our architectural play across the piece. Um, we've obviously had uh, a lot of acquisitions at Cisco um, over the last two to three years, spent uh, over $5.2 billion on the acquisitions and R&D of the product set. So we really, we don't like to just uh, delve into one facet. We're really looking at everything from endpoint security, network security, cloud-based services, managed services that are out there today. Um, and I think one of the biggest things that we really want to endorse and enforce today uh, and over the next couple of days at JISEC is all about the, the WannaCry and the malware that's out there at the mountain, the ransomware. We have a lot of solutions that are tailored specifically focused on those uh, mitigating the risks and reducing the operating space of a lot of the hackers and the threat actors that are out there. So uh, the answer is we're focused on a heck of a lot here right from start to finish of the spectrum. So the attack, obviously the most common and uh, um, poignant attack vectors still say the same really with uh, email and web. But of course, uh, what we see with the sophistication of, of attacks that are happening and the evolution and even revolution of some of those attacks, um, we're having to be even sharper about how we integrate the different point solutions that are out there at the moment in our stack. We've obviously acquired a lot of technology but the, the key theme has been to, to bring those technologies together to talk together. So simple, uh, effective and automated architecture. Rather than having a firewall that doesn't talk across the spectrum of the network, talk across to the endpoint, can't be automated and updated via policy-based enforcement, it's really essential that we get these two products to talk together. And that is really how we've designed um, our technology. Yes, and uh, with GBM, obviously, uh, GBM is a, a huge partner for us. Um, we um, have been working with GBM initially on the network side um, for over 10 years. And then we moved from the network. We did um, a segue into data center. So we did a lot of business with them there. And I think this feels like the natural uh, evolution of uh, you know, where the partnership's going, of course. Those things are still fundamental for us, network and data center, but on top of that, we need to secure them. Uh, we need to be able to plug the gaps that are there and make sure we, uh, again, mitigate that operating space that the threat actors are working in. And I think with GBM in particular, they're very well placed to do that because they're from a very similar network heritage of Cisco. And we do believe at Cisco that network sees everything, so we can really use it as a sensor, as an enforcer in our, our stack when we go to market and try and help our customers. So I think them knowing the network very well has been a good partnership for us to get started in that space and then move out into the rest of the technologies that are there, endpoint, data center, and cloud-based services. So my name is Warren Mercer. I'm a security threat researcher within Cisco Talos. So to anybody who's not familiar with it, Cisco Talos is Cisco's security threat intelligence research organization. Uh, we formed about three or four years ago whenever Sourcefire was acquired and that brought together all the industry experts and domain reputation experts etc. So we set about 300 people at the minute focused dedicated solely on research. So my role within Talos is looking at new threats, discovering new threats, trying to find them and obviously the main aim for us as a research company and as an organization is to protect customers. So the threats that we find eventually become protection and detection mechanisms for our customers. Warren, yes. Why aren't the companies, the organizations taking any precautions or taking any preventions for the attacks? Yeah, I think it's difficult. So we're obviously talking about WannaCry a moment ago. It's difficult for companies to sort of turn around now after the fact and say, if we had it done X, Y, Z, we would have been protected. Companies do need to understand these attacks happen. Innovation happens all the time with malware. Revolution, as it was put there a moment ago, it happens all the time within malware. It's about making sure companies understand their own infrastructure. If you understand the target infrastructure within your environment, you can better understand how to protect it. Now, for me as a researcher, I don't need to know 
where your infrastructure lies or where your infrastructure sits. What I do is I find a malware that's going to attack that infrastructure and then try and help protect against it. Companies, I think, patching is the big thing that they need to get ahead of the game with. And it's very difficult, and I totally appreciate that. It's a difficult space to be in. You have operating technology networks that need to run constantly. Bringing them down is very difficult, but patching will honestly help prevent so many attacks. And aside from that, user awareness. User awareness and user education will also help. So I think companies, after the fact, are really good at saying we should have done all these things, but they need to be much more proactive in understanding what their infrastructure can be attacked by, how it can be attacked, and better understanding how they can protect that environment. After the attack, it's, I mean, I think the reason for that is it's easy to talk after the attack. If nothing happens on your network or your infrastructure or you're not attacked, you don't have anything to talk about. But if you get attacked, and I mean, if we look at WannaCry, for example, it was massive, hitting multiple countries around the world, multiple verticals and industries around the world. It became big news overnight. People had to respond to that. People needed to stand up and take note of, actually, this has happened, and this is what we need to do to try and address it. And yes, it's disappointing it happens after the fact, but unfortunately that's the reality of network security sometimes. After the fact is when you start to pay attention and start to take note of what you need to do. Thank you.